Awesome. Uh, recording is on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third day of the Manila PTG. So on Monday, we had our first session, which was the Manila retrospective, uh, which we had a couple of good ideas and uh, some things will likely change for the next uh, cycle. And uh, I mean, some, some a couple of nice things were talked during this uh, retrospective. And yesterday's sessions, uh, we talked about some enhancements to the pool layer and NetApp's lab, uh, snapback feature, as well as uh, what's left for SRBAC and what we have managed to accomplish so far. And our retrospective on our internship projects, all of that is recorded. So if you missed the sessions, please check out that on the uh, OpenStack Manila YouTube channel. I think I should link that here, but um, I'm trying to post all of the videos of the discussions at the end of the day so other folks can catch up uh, kind of when the discussion is still kind of fresh. So yeah, today we have a couple of other nice topics to talk about. Uh, first, we have all things FFS as usually for the PTG and also some uh, backup enhancements and also the backup driver implementation with the CBAC. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Um, yeah, and the first topic is, oh, sorry. First topic is the all things FFS. I think Ashley is, is gonna be leading us uh, through that. So yeah, uh, Ashley, floor is yours. Great, thanks. All right. Um, so let's, let's start with, uh, the deprecation of standalone NFS Ganesha. We've got a documentation update. I think that was Gotham who put that in. So thank you, Gotham, uh, for working on that. And we've also got a deprecation warning, which I believe was Carlos. Um, so that's, that was made for the, the users to see, uh, this deprecation. And we are actively encouraging, uh, Manila users to use the Ceph Orchestrator deployed NFS service. Uh, we've also made some improvements in the driver to support multiple file systems better. We've got one patch that makes use of the get optional share creation data interface, uh, which still needs to be implemented in our CSI driver. And there is a patch in progress where we, meaning Manila, uh, calculates the file system capacity information, specifically the allocated, allocated capacity number. Um, the approach here in this patch looks good, but making the calculation every time we get uh, like share information would take a really long time <laughs> in productions where there can be hundreds or even thousands of shares. So. Uh, maybe if we can keep track of this number and change it uh, with specific triggers like uh, on creation or deletion, you know, things like that, it's something to, to definitely look into. So um, if you guys are, have time, we could definitely use some eyes on that. Um, let's see, moving on to CI updates. Uh, we have bumped the version of Ceph used in Catacall and in Bobcat to Reef, and we are currently backporting that work to Antelope. Uh, and we're also working through some Antelope CI failures, uh, specifically the DevSec plugin Ceph, Ceph NFS, NFS job. <laughs> uh, it's a mouthful. Um, it's failing right now. It's on, on CentOS 9, and it's failing due to a pip issue. So we're going to be looking into changing that back to the default node set, which currently is Ubuntu Jammy. Uh, but that change brings up a package dependency issue with NFS Ganesha v4. So we will bump that to v5 for Ceph versions Quincy and later. Um, and also in that same patch will be where we're bumping uh, NFS Ganesha to v5. We'll be moving away from the packaged, the package based installation of Ceph. Um, also in, uh, in, uh, Antelope CI, we're changing the CephFS native job to a Ceph ADM deployment, and we'll be backporting the multi-node job to Antelope. Uh, lastly, uh, some of the work that I've done this quarter, I mean, uh, cycle, uh, we've implemented um, an ingress daemon in Caracol, 
which passed testing at the time, but now that we're backporting it to Bobcat, we've encountered some, some flakiness. <laughs> so some tests fail and some tests pass even when they encounter the same like failures and, and issues in the Ceph ADM logs. So we're, we're making a Ceph tracker to help triage that issue. We're also gonna be enabling some, some more logs to see what exactly is going on there. Um, but that's, I think that's it for the first major part of this of this doc. Do you guys have uh, any questions so far? I know I'm going through this kind of fast. <laughs> nope, All right. not for me. Cool, cool, cool. I'll accept that, that, that silence. <laughs> uh, so we'll be on to some, some RFE work. We've got uh, manage and manage implementation with the, this driver, Carlos. Is that uh, up to you? Yeah, thank you. So uh, manage and manage is something that we have uh, been looking at for a while. And I'm not sure if everyone's aware of what manage and manage is, but uh, it's pretty much something that you can use to uh, bring shares that already exist under Mandela management. So let's suppose you have like a Ceph cluster or a, a untapped storage or something like that. And that share, the third party system is not yet being managed by Manila. So that's pretty much the way you can use to do that. So Manila will be taking care of the life cycle of that given share, their export location, be able to take snapshots and manipulate it. So a lot of the drivers have already implemented that. Um, and I think we were like missing this functionality for uh, today's FFS drivers, uh, both native and NFS. I think at some point we allowed or we allow and managing a share from Manila using uh, CFFS drivers. Uh, but I mean, there is no way that we can bring that share back if we unmanage it. So yeah, now uh, that's pretty much what we are looking forward to implementing. So, I mean, it's, it's a very good use case, um, you know, when we are looking to, you know, migrate all of our shares workload to Manila. And yeah, it, it's going to be good to have this feature also implemented so that, you know, administrators can bring their share existing shares to Manila. So that's pretty much uh, what um, this feature stands for. And the idea is that we want to uh, implement this within the Ceph drivers during this release, like, so um, that feature will be available in the uh, would be available in the domination release. Um, yeah, so this there might be a couple of other challenges, like not technically speaking, because I mean, yes, uh, when we do that managing cycle, that managing part, the shares usually in the backends have their export locations or their uh, names updated to match whatever Manila shares are created with. So for example, it wouldn't uh, for, it wouldn't be ideal if we had like one share managed by Manila that uh, the name differs in the backend uh, compared to the other shares that are created in Manila. So um, the idea is that uh, in other uh, projects usually uh, or in other drivers, usually we can rename this share or their export locations, change the export locations to match whatever the share looks like in Manila. And this can be a bit challenging, but that's a challenge that's gonna be a, a nice to solve in the CFFS drivers. So I think that's pretty much the work uh, for this. I don't know if you guys have any questions about the functionality, but uh, the idea is that we are planning to work on this during this cycle. Yeah, short and sweet for this. Uh, any questions? Not on my side. Thanks, Carlos. Not for me either, just that, you know, the UX will change as you're saying um, with respect to the other drivers. Uh, uh, it, it it is something you would probably have to test and design uh, how the implementation might look might look like. It shouldn't really matter at the end of the day what the export path looks like. 
because uh, most people would be consuming this in, with some sort of automation. Um, but but then again, we just introduced a feature that said uh, we can customize those export paths for predictability. Um, so this this may be something like that, where somebody brings in uh, something from Ceph that's named in a particular way um, for, for to gain that sort of advantage. But not much we can do without a Ceph API. Yeah. Do we have a spec for this? For manage and manage, no, we don't. Um, okay. But I think it's mostly because, I mean, the fun core functionality in Manila is already implemented. And mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of drivers already, like, you know, doing this. Um, and the idea is that we will add this to the uh, CephFS drivers. So, I mean, I think in this case, uh, a specification was, would suit in case we needed to change some things stru uh, structurally in Manila or uh, do some modifications to accommodate. But I think that would cause likely like other problems we would need to solve with the people that are implementing it. So I think this is at this point a matter only of the Ceph driver. Um, and yeah, I think for this case, we can document it uh, in a blueprint, for example, uh, mm -hmm. mention the use cases. Uh, also, to try as soon as the implementation is ongoing, you're done, up the updated documentation. But yeah, the specification, I think, yeah, I, I don't think we might need it. Okay. Right. So if there aren't any other questions, I think I can uh, proceed to the next topic, which is also something that I'm planning to work on. Um, so insure shares. Yes, we talked about this during the previous cycle. And um, all of this comes from uh, a book that was reported by CERN. So let me get the link uh, to that book. Yeah. So this is about like uh, in this case CERN uh, like the Ceph monitor IPs uh, were updated in the configuration but they were not reflected uh, into the share so the monitors IPs now uh, got outdated at some point and they so, I mean they were looking for approaches to figure out this issue uh, because I mean one way to get the insured shares routine uh, running is restarting the Manila uh, share service so that uh, if you do that and also, you know, um, signalize that you have uh, done some configuration changes, then yes, uh, there will be like the insured shares running with uh, against your shares and uh, changing the export locations. Uh, but currently, you know, only restarting the share service uh, does that, which can be a bit painful, honestly, because if you uh, need to restart your service, that means that there will be a bit of a downtime uh, for that Manila share service and other requests targeting that uh, might take a while. So we were thinking about an approach where we would provide an API that people would be able to uh, use uh, to trigger the specific uh, insure shares um, method, the insure shares routine in the Manila share uh, server, and then that uh, that would be enough to update all of the expert locations uh, of the shares. So, I during the previous cycle, I didn't. Uh, managed to work on the specification or a light spec, 
uh, but I kind of had some drafts and then I pushed the draft today earlier um, to uh, document a bit of what we discussed and what what are the ideas for this pack. So the problem is pretty much what I just described, uh, and the solution, as I said, is like, inch, I mean, allowing sure shares to be called through uh, an API request. And then that request would be, you know, we, we would specify, for example, a host, um, and then we would, you know, look at, uh, we, uh, at all of the shares within that host and uh, run the insure shares. And then we would pick up the configuration for that. So that's the main idea. Um, and there are some uh, impacts to that. For example, like uh, as we discussed in the previous cycle, we can't just, you know, allow someone to do this multiple times. Otherwise, I mean, uh, it might take a while and we might uh, mess, up, uh, mess up with something. So the idea is we will allow it to be run and then we will uh, update the share status uh, to something. Here I, I named like updating configuration. We can name it whatever we, uh, we want. Uh, but I think it's pretty much like what uh, it is doing. So uh, we will update uh, the share status. And as soon as it is uh, updated, uh, we will block this operation from happening again, but also like it's a bit tricky because other operations we might need to block as well. So uh, yeah. And when all of this is done, when the share shares routine uh, has completed, then we'll get the share back into the, its available status again. And yeah, pretty much let uh, the administrators run it again if they want to. But this is would be a way to deal with this, uh, you know, without uh, any downtime. Um, it might take a while, yes, still, because it's checking on every single share. And um, I mean, if we are talking about clouds that have like, you know, thousands of shares, then it can take a while to, to run this for all of them. Uh, but yeah, I think it's still better than actually going ahead and restarting the Manila shares. Uh, and yeah, I think this can be helpful for a couple of things. So some impacts, I don't think there will be a, like a database impact, for example, especially because uh, we are only allowing one new status to be configured. So that's the only thing that we would need in terms of, you know, updates. But I mean, there's no column being added, no column being removed, no new table, nothing like that. Um, and yeah, we might need to block some uh, some operations, especially like pickup and migration with the generic driver because the export location might change. Or it might even not be working still. But yeah, I I initially my I thought this could be uh, an issue. Um, also, yeah, on managing and and things like that that could you know have a bad impact. I think. So uh, unmanaging because I mean we would uh, we would pretty much um, tr delete the share uh, kind of the it's kind of like a soft deletion the re the record uh, still exists in the database as you know but the share wouldn't be there and then it we would fail to filter it again if we are updating the share so a couple of operations like this we will need to block um, and yeah. Also, uh, I can see some implementation that we will need for the CLI because, yeah, it's nice to provide that too. Uh, OpenStack SDK can be updated as well, and also some Manila Tempest plugin tests uh, to uh, fit this. I think it's it's going to be a very nice scenario to test. It can be tricky, but I think in in terms of CI, it will not be because we kind of can, yeah. It can be tricky because we don't have control over every single one of the uh, shares within a backend in a specific uh, host because I mean there are like ten threads running tests and then they are creating and deleting shares. So we need to think this through when testing with um, the Tempest plugin and also like some documentation updates. We discussed some alternatives and I just documented one of them, which would be like a periodic configuration check in the drivers uh, that would, you know, end up updating the shares. But I mean, this might end up being run when we don't need it to be run. So yeah, then that's one of the plans that I have for this cycle. 
um, I talked too much already, so I'll let you guys uh, ask questions in case you have any. Hey, Carlos. Um, I think we need to flush this out a little bit more. That was my first thought uh, over here because the, I, I think there's going to be a lot more impact than uh, you know we're, we're, we're picturing. The reason I say that is because, firstly, it's an API, right? You're you're going to have to yeah. have um, you know some sort of a policy around it, etc. So we need to think through who can who can execute it and what are the defaults like, um, because it, it is a maintenance operation. Yeah. Um, and and we're not really sure what uh, end end users can get out of this, um, and it's possible that uh, it, this maintenance operation is done by uh, uh, operators because they did something at the back end, um, yeah. or because they want to actually uh, you know uh, just like yesterday we were talking about uh, you know they made some metadata changes, some share type changes, etc. could uh, could actually be carried over to the back end uh, through this uh, as the interface. So maybe the the operator has uh, you know reconfigured something that's associated with a share um, that we'll need to re uh, redo uh, in the back end, for instance. Um, and so that's what that's one uh, use case for this that's not accounted for yet. Um, and the other is, does a tenant ever need access to something like this? Like you know, if, uh, do, would they may be making any metadata changes that that better you know possible and and could we have a hook in the API to to check for that? You know, possible uh, things where the tenant can also access this, but um, you yeah. know, some other actions that the uh, that uh, only the operator can perform, kind of a thing. So I would I would uh, flush out that detail uh, for sure. Um, and second, I, I think the uh, the state change that you're talking about is is actually a really uh, fine idea. Um, we should probably use an ing state at the end uh, because. Uh, we have we have a we have a way to say okay this is a busy state, yeah. And all all actions on top of that are are automatically disallowed uh, because it's a busy state. Um, so it may, it may ensure it's set as a busy state will will prevent a lot of the you know things. And sec uh, and the third thing is this is at a per share basis. Um, so technically, uh, you, you, it's possible that you've done something that affects an entire backend. Right, yeah. and so the preferred method of getting through a, a, an entire backend this uh, stuff is via restarting the Manila share service because we will then take all of the shares and we'll we'll automatically do this. Um, but if you were to do this per share, uh, is why you would use this interface, right? The, so there's no need for us to build something where um, we we're going to take a bulk action on any of the shares. Uh, and and this isn't me uh, just saying this; is also me kind of asking that question is there any use case at all um, for this to be beyond per share like do you want it to be done uh, you know per back end at all uh, so far we have not heard anybody asking for that uh, but the bug that you're referencing from cern uh, is that i mean that seems like a bulk concern right they did uh, change the mon ips on their ceph cluster yeah that's the main reason why I initially thought it should be a book action because I mean, if a configuration has changed in the backend, like for example, the mon IP is changed, it's not going to mm -hmm. be for a single share. Um, that's going to be for like all of the shares within that backend. So that's why I initially thought only about, you know, uh, doing that. Oh, so technically, uh, yeah, I, I actually, I think that's what the, that's what the missing piece from reading this was. Uh, was this a bulk action at all? Okay. Um, so yeah, f let's let's flush that out and and you know provide an API spec kind of a thing. Um, sure. And we'll be able to you know deliberate on that over there. But yeah. otherwise, I think it's a great thing to do because uh, you you really don't want this happening on every restart. So maybe after we do this, we we find a way to just prevent it altogether. Uh, if if you know prevent it as in set a configuration uh, that basically turns off ensure shares altogether uh, when you're doing restarts, even if the driver detects some changes, um, because you're now you're now uh, providing a way to defer that to an operator. Yes. No, that's uh, that's a good idea. Um, there, I can update this, uh, like make it also like a huge uh, 
a spec. A regular uh, spec, only yeah. for the API perspective. And I'm, I'm sure you'll also want to flush out what, what it looks at the drivers. Although, I, I don't, as you said, maybe there is nothing changing in the drivers because they already implement either ensure share or ensure shares. And that's what we're trying to hook on to. Yes. Yeah, but I suspect after yesterday's um, request from um, Kiran about uh, changing stuff with metadata, um, if if we end up using this ensure shares mechanism, even drivers would have to end up uh, you know, implementing something. Yeah. Yeah. But cool idea. Thanks. Oh, thank you for the feedback. Right, so that's all I had for this topic. I think I took a lot of time already. So yeah, uh, do you guys have any other questions? I'd to take them. Otherwise, I think we can continue to the other uh, topics in this Ceph, uh, all things of SR. Yeah, so the next uh, RFE is the DHSS true implementation, which uh, I'll let Gotham take over. Thank you. So uh, this was uh, this has been a request on the mailing list uh, recently, and then uh, and also something that we've been noodling for a while um, with um, Ceph, and we've we've discussed this in the past PTG as well. Uh, and right now, the the reason it comes back up is because um, there is new um, code in this in Ceph to deploy uh, NFS Ganesha daemons, and it's getting better over the um, over the re releases that Ceph has had. Um, so the latest release of Ceph has actually stabilized uh, the NFS service. Uh, it's introduced a new uh, ingress service um, to work exactly what, uh, I mean, uh, what one would expect from, um, you know, a standalone NFS Ganesha that's configured with Manila. Um, so the, the, uh, it, it is. It might be time for us to revisit this spec just for that, uh, or this uh, need just for that. Uh, so there were um, uh, some discussions on this, um, uh, you know, GitHub issue, and some really nice ideas. I don't want to take too much time to delve into the uh, into the ideas deeply. I think we should convert this into a spec, um, uh, although there would not be. Uh, any uh, Manila API changes, I, I think specking it, this out would just probably allow us to have a discussion on get it. Um, and but broadly, the uh, the idea is to hook into uh, OpenStax networking and allow um, uh, you know tenants to create um, uh, you know interfaces either on an existing Ganesha uh, instance or uh, on on a um, on a new. Uh, Ganesha instance, uh, which is dedicated to that particular tenant, and that's kind of the conversation that's that's on this GitHub issue as well, because NFS Ganesha is also making uh, improvements um, to allow uh, partitioning um, uh, when it comes to multi-tenancy uh, at the network path. So we might be able to, to take some advantages over there without having to increase the amount of resources that uh, Ceph uh, that are required on the Ceph cluster to run multiple uh, NFS clusters. Um, but that's uh, that's internal uh, detail at the moment. Um, I don't think there is much that we can do without, like you know, um, throwing out all those alternatives in the in a, in a spec. So, if there is a need over here um, in in this crowd or somebody that's listening to this uh, later on, uh, I, I will end up posting up the spec and I'll respond to the original mail thread from. Uh, OpenStack discuss. I'll link it out of this etherpad. Um, so if if you if you're willing, uh, please come help us design this. Uh, we're not sure we'd get we'd get all of it done in the Dalmatian release, but I think it's 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 quite a fine thing to start on because uh, in the theme of things that uh, f folks have asked for this FFS driver to improve upon, uh, one of them is DHSS true, um, and it gives them a lot more flexibility in in uh, in 
in, in, in especially something like a public cloud setting um, than uh, the, the existing mechanisms of using DHSS false. Um, what else? Yeah, it's pretty much uh, it. I didn't want to spend too much time on that. Um, we, in the short amount of time, I, I can actually uh, shed light on the other two topics as well. Um, so the first one uh, out there is NFS v3. Um, just a, uh, just just a, uh, some news for folks over here. Um, Ganesh has always supported NFS v3, um, except we've uh, we've not, um, uh, you know, we've we've actually. Uh, asked people not to be using that with the Ceph NFS uh, solution, uh, and that's that, that recommendation comes from Ceph itself. It's, and part of the reason is there um, there is quite a lot of difference between NFS v3 and v4. Uh, I won't get into the weeds as to what the differences are, but there are. Um, the, the, I mean, at the uh, uh, you know at a very broad level, there's a lot of uh, you know uh, file locking and and uh, you know de delegations and all of that, which is handled natively in the in the NFS v4 plus uh, protocols, which are not handled natively in v3. Uh, so you are required to run uh, other uh, services to to uh, to support you with that. And when you run multiple services like RPC bind or uh, or statd or anything with with your NFS server, you you should also be worried about how the, how the recovery works for those services. Um, but this issue of having NFS v3 support keeps coming up because there are um, there are some operating systems in the wild um, which even after like a couple of decades uh, have no uh, support for NFS v4 uh, v4.1 and beyond uh, specifically. Uh, and so it, on those operating systems, you want you, 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 to be able to access CFFS NFS shares. You don't really have an option but uh, use v3. And uh, and deploy, deployers have been preventing this, right? Just because there is no recovery, there is it is it, it isn't as performant. It, it, it and there was there were also some uh, deficiencies in the CFFS uh, CFFS cell. Um, so. Off late in the reef release, uh, Ceph has started closing those gaps. Um, so now you, uh, if, if NFS v3 exports are possible and, and are supported uh, with a whole lot of caveats. Um, so in, uh, one of them being, if you're planning to use this for said operating system, uh, please only use this for said operating system. Do not use this on any Linux uh, operating system because uh, Linux operating systems will, uh, I mean, uh, will typically have an NFS v4.1 and 4.2 or whatever client, uh, and those work perfectly fine. Um, and at the, uh, simultaneous access has some issues as well. And um, and and the and, and NFS v3 clients uh, in the in this operating system that we're talking about do not have any way of recovering. So if your NFS server is going through a maintenance, any restarts, et cetera, your clients are going to get rudely disconnected. Uh, and that is to be expected. So any kind of application critical uh, use cases of this uh, should should keep that in mind um, that that this sort of disconnect could happen. Um, but providing compatibility was uh, the first goal, and and folks in the NFS Ganesha community are looking at um, you know in the future probably adding some sort of uh, uh, you know recovery, it's probably sharing the NFS Ganesha database uh, recovery database with these um, uh, auxiliary services that you might be running uh, stat d rpc by etc um, i don't know how how well that will pan out technically um, it is it is something we'll keep an eye out uh, on the uh, nfs ganesha uh, you know repo and stuff um, and we'll up, we'll try to update docs we've already reflected this in the manila docs if you're if you're interested um, and the last topic that I had uh, was the async mirroring uh, stuff that uh, Ceph, uh, Ceph introduced a couple of releases ago. And um, async mirroring is a way for, a, for Ceph to back up CephFS uh, file systems. And uh, it, you, you run a mirror daemon, uh, and it takes all of the data, including, um, uh, I mean, uh, that, that is there under the file system. So basically, all of the sub volumes and so on. Um, this isn't the same thing as Manila's share replication uh, because share, share replication uh, uh, is done at a per share basis. Um, and, and a share in CephFS for us 
um, is a sub volume uh, and there is no way to uh, plug in uh, you know straightforward at least with this ffs mirroring solution because there's also no way of um, doing an automatic failover at this point um, so we're, we're exploring a different way to implement this but very early on in the design uh, of this feature itself so if you're interested in something like this uh, again uh, please get in touch uh, and we'll be uh, we'll, we'll be posting a blueprint uh, and we, we can have some discussions over that as well um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Just introducing these topics as these are things that we're uh, we're interested in driving in the in this upcoming cycle for CFFS. Any questions, concerns? No. Uh, just a comment on the async mirroring. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, something very nice to introduce. Um, and I hope, really hope we can get this implemented. Um, yeah, I love backup or uh, things like that, solutions. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, the next set of topics that we'll have, we'll talk a lot about that. Um, but probably will not be about async mirroring. Yep. Great. I think that uh, I think that concludes the all things CFFS portion of today's topics. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Gotham. Uh, that was really great. Uh, like the update and also the plans. Like you know, there, there's a lot uh, of great things coming up for the next cycles. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, we are set to have a five-minute break, so I think we can stick to that and then get back to discussing the backup APIs enhancements and also uh, the backup driver implementation with Sebec and the bug management stats and cycle reports. Um, I think I'll break the recording at this point and then uh, do just like another recording uh, for the next session uh, because there is an issue with uh, with midpad that or not an issue, but uh, the limit for midpad is like 100 minutes, and we can't go two hours uh, recordings uh, full. So yesterday I split it into two recordings, and uh, this recording is going to be split here. So if you're watching this recording, please check out uh, the backup discussions in the other recording, the Open Second Model channel. All right. So five minute break. See you in five minutes. Thanks. <laughs>